Gethsemane represents a place of pain, anguish, dread, and betrayal. So let me ask you, are you currently in your own personal Garden of Gethsemane? Are you in pain and suffering because of some betrayal or circumstance that happened to you that was no fault of your own? Welcome to the Garden of Gethsemane. After the Last Supper, Jesus and his disciples came to this general area where he spent his last night on earth before the crucifixion. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Gethsemane is located east of the Temple Mount at the base of the Mount of Olives. The word Gethsemane comes from the Hebrew word gatshmanim, or oil press. With the abundance of olive trees, it is believed that in this area there was also an olive press during the time of Jesus. In the first century, there were three stages when pressing olives. The first time an olive was pressed, the oil was set aside as holy to be used in the religious services at the temple. The second time an olive was pressed, the oil was used as a medicine or in food. The third time it was pressed, the oil was used as fuel in lamps. Interestingly, if you like numerical patterns, there are two events this night that also came in threes. On the way to the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus predicts Peter's denial. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. These three denials take place mere hours later, just after Jesus was arrested. We find this in Matthew chapter 26, 69 through 75. Then most famously, Jesus prayed here at Gethsemane three times. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And then after this, Jesus got up and confronted the disciples for falling asleep. And then he went away a second time and prayed, My Father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Now, I'm not saying there's any deep spiritual significance to take from the three stages of an olive press, Jesus' three prayers, and Peter's three denials that came later. I simply thought it was interesting to at least bring up. Now, before Jesus went to pray, we see the emotional state that he was in. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Jesus came so he could die for our sins and give the world the chance to be reconciled to God. But knowing this purpose, why was he still so troubled? Though Jesus was fully God, being in human form, he still got hungry. He needed sleep. He would feel physical pain. So this agony Jesus was experiencing in the garden was in part knowing the physical abuse he would soon endure as well as his betrayal and being abandoned by his closest followers. But I personally believe there was something else he was dreading. While on the cross, Jesus had every one of our sins, past, present, and future, all piled on him. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So with this monumental context in place, I believe one of the biggest things Jesus was struggling with here in the garden is what he later cries out while on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God the Father is a holy God, and at the moment Jesus took all of our sins on him, he took the punishment we all deserve. And for a brief moment, the connection with the Father he always had since eternity past was broken. I believe this is why Jesus in his human form was in such agony while he prayed in the garden. But what do you think? Was Jesus so overwhelmed with sorrow just on the impending physical torment he was about to receive? Or was it because for a brief moment on the cross, he knew God would forsake him? Or is it something else? Let me know what you think in the comments. Now, were any of these trees witnesses to the events that transpired in the garden that night? Maybe. Olive trees are difficult to date, but of the three that were successfully dated, they appear to be from the 12th century AD. So it's possible some of the other trees are older. Many well-meaning people get obsessed with the precise location of where Jesus prayed, was beaten, crucified, buried, and rose from the dead. But more important than where the exact location of these events happened is the fact that they actually took place. Gethsemane represents a place of pain, anguish, dread, and betrayal. So let me ask you, are you currently in your own personal Garden of Gethsemane? Are you in pain and suffering because of some betrayal or circumstance that happened to you that was no fault of your own? See, the enemy's tactics are to isolate you and to render you paralyzed with fear, pain, and depression so that you will be ineffective for God. Just do what Jesus did. Surround yourself with those closest to you and communicate your pain 
and hurts to God. The pain and the struggle won't be magically erased, but when you submit them to God and allow His will to be done in your life, no matter how difficult it might be, you will come out of this stronger than ever before. Let me leave you with some scriptures to give you some encouragement. David said, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And then the writer of Hebrews explains why we should feel confident in going to Jesus in our time of need. So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Now, this concludes my review of the Garden of Gethsemane. You may be wondering why I didn't go into detail about Jesus' arrest here in the garden, but I will include that in my next review, which will be on the house of Caiaphas, which is where they brought Jesus after his arrest in the garden. But until then, thank you for watching, and as always, God bless you.